Hello. I want to tell you that I never really liked babies. That, that makes me sound kind of like a bad person. But it, it's really not so much that I didn't like them. I just wasn't interested in them. And I think there must be a baby fairy because that baby fairy dropped baby dust on me and my young husband. And there was nothing we wanted but a baby. We had to have a baby. And of course, we tried for a year. Nothing happened. I um, decided I needed to quit my job. I was teaching seven composition courses each semester and grading all those papers. And I know it's not a popular thing to do now, but I quit my job. <laughs> and um, we tried for months more. Still, no baby, no salary. Um, and we were invited to meet an old friend in downtown Charleston. Our friend was named Manasseh Manculeo. He's from California, and he's the son of a Maasai chief from Kenya. His father was also a witch doctor. His father converted to Christianity, and when he did, the villagers cut the calves of his cattle, cut the hind legs, and that really destroyed whatever wealth that he had. So <laughs> he was bitter. And then he had a son, and he named him Manasseh. And Manasseh means I forget. So he wanted, no, I'm not sure it means I forget. It's either for I forget. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, it's not, it's not I forget. It's not, what is the I forget, I for, whatever. But um, um, it, it basically, he doesn't forgive, basically. He forgets. So it was right. It was forget. And Manasseh is the kind of guy that made you forget everything. He was this gorgeous, lean, Kenyan guy who had a beautifully sculpted face. And he reminded me of all those guys that you see that win many marathons. And his idol was Jesse Owens. Um, but I don't even think he ran. <laughs> he just had this great look and this huge, wonderful smile. And we had a wonderful conversation. And then he looked at us very seriously and said, I've seen you in your room. I've seen you laughing. I've seen you crying. I've seen you wishing. I've seen you giggling. And I know what it is you want. And you will have a child within the year. Well, we left Manasseh with great hope and also the great joy of just being around him. Then we got some practical advice from a friend who said that the next time that I was ovulating, we should get two or three pillows and prop them under me, and you figure out the rest. I, um, and I believe that was the day that our child was conceived. About nine months later, we're on a highway in the middle of the night, 4 a.m., um, it's 40 minutes to the hospital. My um, husband is in the front seat speeding. I'm in the back seat. <sighs> you don't remember Lamas. Um, <laughs> breathing. And the next day at 6.15, next night really, my daughter was born. Daughter? You know, mothers have senses, and they didn't used to tell us what sex our baby was going to be. I knew I was having a boy. I didn't even want a boy. I just was having a boy. I just knew it. And I said, daughter? The daughter said, it's a girl. I said, it's a girl. And then that was the beginning. Then they brought her to me, and I looked at her, and she had really dark hair that stuck to her head, and her skin was darker than mine, and her eyes were really dark, and I thought, did I forget something? Um, <laughs> I, and then I looked over at my Middle Eastern-looking husband and remembered, <laughs> yes. Um, the, the real joy of having a baby that looks <laughs> nothing like you is an incredible feeling. I loved it. I felt like I had given birth to a bohemian princess. <laughs> I was so glad that she didn't look like me. I mean, you never think about it. You think you want a little me. This was a not a little me, and she's still not a little me, and it's pretty exciting. Well, a couple of days later, I got to take her home. I'm watching that clock. I got to take her home, and I love to sing to her, and I'm going to subject you to something pretty awful. Um, 
I, I really like the Beatles songs to sing to her, and I used to sing, I maybe just have to talk it. I, I give her all my love, that's all I do. And if you saw my love, you'd love her too. And I love her. And this little girl, who's a grown woman like some of you right now, is the greatest love that I've ever known. And she's absolutely the best story that I could ever tell. Thank you.